those meals, man. The Big Lebowski is uh, about a character named Jeff Lebowski, played by Jeff Bridges, a sort of aging pothead who lives in Los Angeles. The character that Jeff Bridges plays is sort of loosely based on. Um, this is a guy who we've known for about 15 years who um, actually does call himself the dude. Dude. And it was sort of uh, imagining him in uh, sort of the context of a Chandler kind of a story. The person, it would seem, on the face of it, least equipped to, uh, to deal with it. That's sort of the conceit of the movie. I mean, it was clear to Jeff that uh, the character wasn't into the sort of Los Angeles health, fitness, and beauty, and that he could sort of let himself go, which he probably kind of enjoyed even, even just for that. The, the story was as a, very loosely sort of based on the sort of narrative structure of like a Chandler novel, you know, and they're very, those novels are very episodic in nature. It's, they usually follow the main character as he sort of uh, encounters these different characters on a sort of journey to uncover a mystery or find a missing person or whatever it may be in the novel. Um, so that was sort of the, in this case, that was sort of the model for the story. In, in each movie it's a little bit different in terms of where the... Actually, the one, the, the one case where it got sort of just in terms of plot most involved and most sort of difficult for us to manage was Miller's Crossing, which is a gangster movie, sort of a homage uh, to, or a ripoff, depending on your point of view, of uh, Dashiell Hammett. And that got very sort of, just in, in, the, in the sense of the convolution of uh, the plot, got very sort of involved, and that was sort of, as I say, difficult to manage. This one, yeah, not as, not as much. It was probably... Yeah, this one, we sort of figured, you know, if things have become a little bit too complicated and are unclear, it doesn't really matter. I mean, the plot is kind of not the... Uh, and again, this is similar to Chandler. I, the plot is sort of secondary to the other things that are sort of going on in the in the piece. I think, and uh, if people get a little bit confused, it's it's I don't think really necessarily going to get in the way of them enjoying the, the movie. Yeah, you look at something like The Big Sleep, and nobody seemed to know, the pe including the people who sort of wrote it, what the hell was going on in that plot either. So how you doing there, dude? We saw John. Uh, Turturro play an Hispanic character in a play at the public theater about, uh, must be about uh, 11 or 12 years ago. And ever since then we've wanted to write something for him where he plays an Hispanic character. Um, and this just seemed like the sort of right uh, opportunity for it. You know, I mean, um, uh, the Jeff Bridges and John Goodman character, they were, um, um, and at the point where we were writing the script, we sort of uh, um, conceived them in the sense that, you know, designed them so that they would be able to, or constantly would be sort of pushing each other's buttons in terms of uh, those kinds of reactions, you know, the sort of getting on each other's nerves and yet still at a certain level really liking each other. It's interesting because one of the things that Jeff sort of came to while we were rehearsing before we started shooting was he sort of conceived the character appropriately as being very sort of mellow and laid back and yet in practically every scene in the movie he ends up exploding because of what Walter is is doing or saying or making happen. Um, and that was something he hadn't sort of associated on the first reading of the script with the character, but it's very much a part of sort of how they, the two characters uh, relate to each other. The way we started working with Roger is when we, we did Barton Fink, we were shooting a movie in Los Angeles, non-union, and for that reason we, um, but on the other hand we didn't want to, we wanted to work with someone whose work we knew and liked as opposed to someone who's just starting out. And that sort of meant a foreign DP who wasn't in in the unions in the United States. Yeah, Julianne Moore is really good. Yeah, it wasn't meant to be. It isn't specifically English, the accent. It's some vague, non-specific, geographically swell finishing school for girls in Switzerland, maybe, accent um, that she came up with. Uh, yeah, she just, you know, read the script and sort of intuitively grasped that there should be something sort of horribly regal about the character. <laughs>
she was very funny. How you doing there, dude? Woo! I'm throwing rocks tonight. Steve doesn't Rocky say much in the movie. He, um, but what we thought it would be interesting after, you know, he plays sort of a motor mouth in Fargo. He never really shuts up. And so we thought it would be interesting to sort of go the other way um, in this movie in terms of the character that we wrote for him. The carpet, you know, it's interesting. We just got a call from Floor Coverings Weekly, a magazine that to the trade, of, you know, about floor coverings that wanted to do a story on The Big Lebowski because catalyst for the story was the floor covering. Yeah, it's hard to believe that there's actually a weekly about floor covering. Yeah, how much is there to say? It's, uh, he looks like a fucking loser. You, would think, you know, by virtue of that, she would be interested in a Filling lot of material some pages. about the uh, yeah. about the movie. We even offered to pose for if she'd do a cover, <laughs> pose for a cover picture, the two of us in front of the Persian carpet, which the, uh, Jeff Bridges' character appropriates, and she was sort of polite, declined. But yeah, it is true that the movie does the sort of catalyst for the plot. The whole sort of beginning of the the, the movie uh, uh, um, has to do with um, a rug being soiled in a sort of very particular way. And the main character's sort of journey through the movie is an attempt to sort of get redress for his soiled rug. Yeah, the rug became a very important element. Yeah, then it just sort of seemed to take off. Actually, literally. I mean, we got into the whole, you know, sort of flying carpet thief of Baghdad. Thought we could do many of those shots practically, the shots where we don't see Jeff full figure uh, sort of floating between the girl's legs in the bowling alley, and they had to be composited in a computer with Jeff shrunk very slightly so that he could indeed sort of plausibly pass between their legs but not look like a, not shrunk to the extent that you'd notice. Well, you know, another convention of the private eye movies, I mean, Cham Raymond Chandler's stories, but again, private eye movies generally is at some point the, the uh, private eye gets slugged or, or uh, gets slipped the Mickey Finn or whatever and goes into some sort of delirium or hallucination that's sort of uh, certainly a hallmark of the movies and, and in many of the novels that movies are based on as well. So in that respect, it was sort of, uh, we had license to do it by virtue of the genre, but also it seemed like we had a special license to do that sort of splashy thing by virtue of the characters being a heavy drug user. Um, so, you know, it just uh, it lets you do things that are sort of uh, a departure from the rest of the movie and do make, in, in a sense, come out of nowhere sort of stylistically not like the rest of the movie. Well, that about does her. Wraps are all up. <laughs>